Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of The Park. We have had two rides and I'm still looking for my son, Callum. Let us continue. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled red balling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. They shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Wait, what? So you did not love your son? Oh, there's a note on the window. I thought working in a park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of the season is a really drags, there aren't that many tourists around and so much of the staff spend their days sitting around gossiping and most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean Steve. See, even I am starting to call him Chad and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. It was in the beginning it was a laugh. Steve the local lush as Chad the chipmunk child friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that, but the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first it was little things like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's diner still wearing it and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained discreetly to the park management about the smell and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter the owner one day, but nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by and apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him puking in a gutter outside the Psycoil station because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. No shapes he makes in the ice though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up. I fucking me, whatever he was doing, I asked him what he wanted and he just sat there not saying anything. Eventually I called my supervisor and when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again, Laura Henman. Hello? <laughs> I knew... I knew... Something was gonna happen because it was on the window, but something over here said you can't catch me. I knew that was gonna happen. And I don't think I really... Oh shit! I see a teddy bear! I see a teddy bear in there. But why is she dead? Or why is there a person just standing there? Anyway, I knew that was gonna happen, but I still got adrenaline or whatever it was um, shoot through my body because I was feeling all hot can't see that okay no windows in the back okay great screw the teddy bear I guess Bumper cars! I don't wanna do this. Uh, uh, music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Yeah, guess it does. Callum! Oh, 
Why? What? I don't understand. That's the only one with lights on. Francis DeFresney, Frain, whatever, um, October 25th, 1976, laborers working on the crane, supervisor, blah, 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 a brief description of the accident or incident, during the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the strape straps attaching the load to the truck came on side causing a cascade of bumper cars onto francis who was standing directing the driver francis was crushed by the weight of the cars describe any injuries caused francis was killed did the injured em employee see a doctor <laughs> um y yes if yes did you file an employee's portion of a worker's compensation form yes but why is that Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested Dexter provi provide them with urine samples. What could have been done to prevent this accident? Double checking of the straps after transit should to be mandatory and drug screening for all the drivers. Have the unsafe conditions been corrected? No. Additional information, the local laborers are very superstitious and this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park and exercise the bad spirits. Okay, well this is a very easy thing. Double checking for all the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. Someone died! <laughs> Got my heart racing. So I should go there, or should I go there? I don't know what's over there. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. What? I don't know where he is. What is this lead? It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. 
I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead, my mouth said, Yes, Sheriff. The fuck happened? Maybe she didn't even have a son. Maybe she didn't even have a son and he t gave her a ticket because she was falsely parked and she has um, trauma because she can't realize that her son is dead. Maybe. Ah, I don't want to read the page! Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders, the problem is that they're locals, so they believe a lot of the rumors about what old man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on those tales. Every time a bolt comes loose or a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that's why I chose the site all over the other potential Solomon Island. Solomon Island is a nexus for dark energies and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here, it makes my skin crawl. I called in a few favors back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about the local history. Turns out they do, and it turns out that Old Man Henderson has some pretty strong connection to the Brooklyn crowd. Perhaps something, perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I am missing. Piece of the plans, eh? Did I miss a part when I went directly here? My nose itchy. Why am I going on all the rides? Oh, chipmunk. That startled me. I don't want to read the paper. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Unsafe, close the park. Inspector com comments. After touring the park, riding a rise, and viewing the startling number of incidents suffered here in the park, it is this inspector's opinion that the Atlantic Island Park should be shut down until Nathaniel Winter complies with all safety regulations. While I understand that there is a sensitive political relationship between Mr. Winter and the Senator, I nevertheless suggest that this political consideration should be set aside that such political considerations to be set aside in condemning Atlantic Island Park. The rides, at first glance, appear well constructed and maintained, but the sheer number of incidents in the park during the last few years and during construction laid me to believe that there is something wrong at the base level of construction and we should close the park and fully investigate these flaws. To wit, here is a partial list of the fatalities in the park since of opening two years ago. Uh, a family of three was killed when a roller coaster cart derailed. Fourteen separate incidents of broken bones and crushed ribs while riding the Octotron. Three suicides from the top of the Ferris wheel. A child seriously injured on the escalator. Is that my kid? Over eight dozens? I'm not sure what it says. Over a dozen, maybe. Children reported missing in the House of Horrors since its construction. Oh no, I still have to go there. One report of a drowning in the Tunnel of Tales. That also might be my kid. The sheer volume of incidents means that is my strongest recommendation that Atlantic Island Park be closed immediately. I can't get on while the ride is moving. Someone's got to mess with me again.
People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Callum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. But I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. <coughs> I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. Oh man, that sucks. So he has a top hat and white gloves and he's like a skeleton thingy I guess. So can I write it again? I don't want to. Bye Dawn. What's happening to the mule? Oh, that's creepy. Where did it go? A lot of people idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. My angel likes to read, and little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! You give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... <sighs> we all go insane. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. Okay. Well, maybe you did. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but something with you is really wrong. I think it might be some postpartum shit. I don't fucking wanna. I uh, always wanted to write this one. Never got around to do it before. Because Callum is too small, probably. So I couldn't do anything because that little shit was in my way. He never gave me anything. Something like that, lady? <laughs> I don't want to. Okay. That was a quite heavy stuff she said there. Hi. What do you want? We need to talk about Callum. What do you mean? What have you done to him? I. That's 
something. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Where is Callum? Why do you care? Poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Tell me where my son is. The witch has him now. Has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. Hospital, eh? Wait, what? I didn't read that. Fuck gravity. That lady is seriously disturbed, though. Can you taste your dreams? Oh! <laughs> Way do I go out? Normally you go out that way, but read page. It works. The calculations and adjustments worked. The transport and storage mechanism seems to be fun. It seems to be flawless. What a wonderful day! If only these people knew what they were fueling, and so what if few people leave the park at the end of the day feeling dour? I don't know what dour means. I th think bad. So what if the children are more scared than excited on a roller coaster? This could be the doorway to immortality. Such and such doorways open only to those who have the will to find the key. Yeah, I feel there's some Lovecraftian shit going on. I don't want to go in the shed. Uh oh. What the hell? Take flashlight. No, I don't want to take the flashlight. This means I will have to use it. The witch awaits. The witch awaits. Give me the fucking hatchet. Give it to me. I want this. I don't want to be able to use the flashlight. No, I'm scared. No. This isn't a game, Caleb. This isn't a game. Well, it is. Callum has bruises on his arms, finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. I've asked him, demanded really, to know where he got the marks. But he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. He doesn't dare talk. He's been changing too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. I think he wants to tell me. They are watching him every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. Oh, you care now? I can't save him. And there will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, he will understand why. Something's bad. Something's bad. She has a personality disorder, maybe. That thing's gonna turn on, I guess. Oh, I'm so scared. Hi, thank you. Oh, th yeah. Okay. There's something in the darkness. The whole town was shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. 
Cotton candy corpse leaves sour taste in Parko's mouth. Yesterday evening, visitors to Atlantic Island Park were shocked and horrified by the discovery of a dismembered corpse behind the cotton candy stand. According to the local authorities, the corpse has yet to be identified. However, they have confirmed that the remains appear to be one of a child. The corpse discovered by a group of teenagers from Innsmouth Academy. Innsmouth Cthulhu? Cthulhu Cthulhu? Maybe. Who noticed a pair of ravens tugging at something just out of sight behind the shack. Nathaniel Winter, the owner of Atlantic Island Park, has released the following statement. It is a true tragedy when something like this occurs, especially in a place that was designed to bring forth happiness and joy. The staff of Atlantic Island Park offered their condolences to the family and friends of the victim and will cooperate fully with authorities to help bring this case to arrest. The Solomon Chronicle will provide daily updates on this story going forward. Oh. The fuck was that? Cotton candy, eh? This may be, it may have been Callum's body. Oh, bastard. We did this to him. stare at the floor for now. <laughs> oh god, no! Hi. Yeah, you can stop doing that now. There's something on the trolley now that wasn't there before. Take pills. These are mine. Fear the boy. Say no to graffiti, your mother, not safe, can taste your dreams. All that you love will be carried away. Some kids laugh and some kids cry, but mostly children simply die. Oh God. Okay, well, I am going to have to end, have to end this episode here. Ah, that's creepy as shit. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode of The Park. Bye.